Yes, my friends, winter is coming, at least where I live. So in this video we will create snowflakes like these. But instead of modeling things, I will show you how to create it 100% programmatically using animation nodes and how you can get an almost infinite amount of detail. Let's go! Like I said, we will create a program in animation nodes that gives us snowflakes by using what is called a Lindenmeyer system or L system for short. You can google L systems and check Wikipedia if you want to learn more about this, but I will give you a quick overview of everything you need to know right here, right now. Have you ever heard of turtle graphics? This concept was first used in a programming language called Logo over 50 years ago. The idea behind it is having a little robot called Turtle, which can move and rotate and has a retractable pen that it can lower onto the paper and draw lines while it moves or pick up and move without drawing. This concept can of course also be simulated on screen with a virtual turtle that can move forward, spin and draw lines. So we have certain commands for the turtle like move forward, rotate x degrees, pen up, pen down. We can write out a sequence of these commands for the turtle to follow and to create some sort of line graphics on screen. These sequences can get very long, so first let's simply assign a single character to each command, like f for move forward one unit, plus to rotate right and minus to rotate left. And instead of pen up and pen down, let's simply use capital F for moving forward and drawing a line, and a lowercase f for moving forward not drawing a line. What we are essentially doing here is create an alphabet of symbols we can use to make long character sequences or strings, which can be interpreted as commands for the turtle to make line drawings. Enough theory, let's jump into Blender and Animation Nodes and put this into practice. In Animation Nodes hit Ctrl A, type in L system and add the L system node. The axiom input here is where we enter our turtle commands. Let's start with a simple capital F and plug the mesh output into a mesh object output so we actually get the mesh in a blender object. We get this line going straight up on the C axis. In edit mode we can see what animation nodes created for us, two vertices and an edge between them. Very plain, so let's make it into an actual three dimensional object we can see by using a edge to tube node. And for that we need the vertices and edges which we get from a mesh info node. I also set the resolution to 6 for a hexagonal tube. Let's do F minus F. The step size is how far a single forward motion moves our imaginary turtle. The angle is the default angle of a rotation operation. Now let's try to make the letter Y. We already have two of the three lines required, but how can we get the third line? The first solution you might think of is to rotate the turtle around by adding a bunch of rotations and another F to get back to the split. Then with two more minuses and another F we get the letter Y. But there are two major issues with this. First we draw that line twice generating unnecessary geometry. And second this now only works because we have the angle set to 45 degrees. And as soon as we change the angle the whole thing falls apart. There is a better solution for this sort of requirement. Branches. Let's go back to just a single F. Now we start a new branch with an open square bracket. Think of this open square bracket as remember turtle location and rotation. Now we do minus F and a closing square bracket. This closing square bracket is jump back to the remembered location and rotation. An operation the little turtle robot was obviously not able to do, but we can do it here in animation nodes. Okay, now our turtle is back here facing straight up again. So all we need now is plus F to finish off the letter Y. This is much better now, since the axiom is shorter, we can change the angle and we didn't draw any lines twice. With this shape here, we are already on our way to the snowflake. Let me set the angle to 60 degrees, because water crystals always form those hexagonal patterns. I think, do they? Let me know in the comments. Let us quickly finish the basic shape I used to create my snowflake, by putting the plus F into its own branch and then adding two more Fs to get to this sort of shape. Now we need this same shape six times, rotated around by 60 degrees. This is where we have to start using these rules here. Let's plug in a text list and bring our shape over here. 
Now we need to tell the L system that this string should be a new symbol, for example X. Okay, so X now stands for a single piece of our snowflake. And the axiom set to a single X brings back what we already had before. But now we can call up our symbol X multiple times. Cool. Of course we don't want all these parts to be in a row like this, so we call up each X inside its own branch. Remember, this means that the turtle will be back down here at the origin point after drawing the shape. Then we rotate, call x again inside a branch, rotate again, six times. It's starting to look like a snowflake already. But the real magic happens when we use what we software engineers call recursions. A recursion is a process a procedure goes through when one of the steps of the procedure involves invoking the procedure itself. Ooh, this sounds like it could break your brain, so let me try and explain it in a hopefully simple way. Imagine your task is to count the number of rooms of a house. No, there are no blueprints available, you have to actually go in and count. How can you go about this? You start in front of the main entrance and tie a red string to the front door. Go in and look for all the doors leading to more rooms. You pick one of the doors and go into the next room, unwinding the red string. This red string is your way back out. Here you look for all the doors leading to more rooms. There's just one, so we go inside and look for more doors. There's another one, so you go inside. Now you got to a room that doesn't have any more doors. So you step back out, winding up the red string, put a sticker on the door so you know that you've already visited that room, and continue doing this procedure until you end up back outside the front door. The number of rooms is now equal to however many stickers you used up. In this case, 8 green stickers for 8 rooms. You might think that this is the most awkward way of counting anything, and you might be right, but there are complex tasks computers need to perform on crazy wild data structures. And very often this is how these programs are written. Because the final code is actually short, precise and not difficult to understand, believe it or not. In this example, we solve the big problem by first figuring out the smallest sub-problem. We defined the procedure of counting rooms by using the procedure itself. This is where the recursion happens. And the stop or exit condition of our descent into more and more rooms is naturally given by rooms that have no more doors. Or doors that lead outside, of course. Okay, enough of that. Let me know in the comments if you think you now have a basic understanding of recursions. Or if you don't care anyway and just want to make a freaking snowflake. In the L systems here in animation nodes, we can actually create recursions and that is what I did to make the snowflakes you saw. Let's first take a look at a simple example so it becomes easier to understand what is happening. We start with this very basic string f plus f minus minus f plus f at an angle of 60 degrees. If you are familiar with fractals, this is the base of a Koch curve. Look it up if you want to know more. Now let's add the recursive part. Imagine we want to put this curve onto every straight edge of the curve, like so. We tell the L system that we wish to define f to be exactly that string. Remember a recursion happens when we call a procedure that is defined by calling itself in the process. That's what's happening here. The axiom now has to be just a single f. But nothing special is happening yet because we only see one iteration or generation of the recursion. When we set the generations to two, now animation nodes executes the recursion twice, creating this, which is exactly what we wanted. Of course, the entire thing just got a lot bigger, so I have to zoom out a little or play with the step size here. Look here, the shape from before is now repeated on itself, on every straight line we had before. And we can look at the resulting string this recursion gives us with a viewer node right here. Remember the stop or exit condition in our room example before? A room without any further doors. Here we have no natural occurring stop condition. So instead we have this generations factor to define an exact amount of recursions we want to perform. Let's try three generations and four and five. With each generation the amount of detail grows exponentially. This would be the string of characters we would have to type in here to get this shape. And since this grows at an exponential rate and we humans are not good at thinking in exponential terms, Animation Nodes has a protection built in where by default it doesn't allow strings longer than 100,000 characters. Six generations constructs a string that is roughly 10,000 symbols long. 
and seven generations of this rather simple recursion already produces more than 100,000 symbols. If you think your computer can handle it, you can also change the symbol limit over here. Just take a quick look at the amount of detail we can get. From a distance we can still see our original shape, and then it is repeated here and here, and again here and here and so on. And this is how fractals are born by the way. Now can we finally get to the snowflake? Yes, now we are ready. Let's redefine f to be one part of the snowflake and use a single f as our axiom. With three or four or five generations, we get much more interesting shapes. To make it look even better, we can use another feature of the L system. See here it gives us an output of edge widths. Let's plug that into the radii input of the edge to tube node and now we can change the thickness of each generation by first enabling the hidden input options on the L system node and adding an exclamation mark in the rule. This now means that for each generation the thickness of the lines will be 80% of the previous thickness set by this scale width factor here. Again, thinking in exponential terms, you probably want to change this ever so slightly, staying around a factor of one. For example, 1.01 .01 makes the outer parts a lot thicker. 1.02 is maybe already too much. And same in the other direction, 0.95 makes the ends super thin. We can also do the same thing with changing the step size from within the rule. By placing a double quote symbol in here, we tell the L system to make everything that follows from here on longer or shorter by this scale step size factor. Okay, I'm happy with this result so far. Now all I have to do is copy this six times, which I can do with the L system, just like I showed you before, but we will definitely hit the 100k limit. And it is not necessary to increase that since all we want is the same thing duplicated. So I will simply add an empty and use it as the object offset for an array modifier on the snowflake piece rotated by 60 degrees. Give it a material, place some lights and voila, snowflake with almost infinite detail. The super crazy, wild, some might say horrible topology actually adds a lot to the look here. But think about it, once you know what you're doing and don't need to watch this tutorial with boring explanations of recursions, this is all it takes, I love it. Before I go, a quick overview of other features that I didn't need for the snowflake. Like I said, the capital F moves forward, creating a line, and the lowercase f moves forward without creating a line. Our snowflake is really only two-dimensional, but of course you can rotate the imaginary turtle on all three axes. Use ampersand and caret for pitch and backslash and forward slash for roll rotations. Each F and each rotation uses the default settings of the L system node, but you can also change the size or angle for a single operation by placing the step size or degrees in parentheses right after the symbol. For example, F5 makes this step a fixed length of five units and plus 30 rotates 30 degrees. You can use A, B, X, Y and C for symbol variables to use in a set of rules. And the generation's value here is actually a floating point, meaning it can also act like a growth factor. Did you know that all this is possible in animation nodes like that? Scribble a comment below and let me know what you think and tag me when you post your own creations. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you loved it, blend file on Patreon, here's a list of the L system symbols you can use, crispy, out. Mm -hmm.